Thank you so much for joining us. This is part of our course on science-based solutions for anxiety. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on the physiological components and giving you real solutions that you can use right now to reduce your feelings of stress and anxiety. So I'm joined today by Dr. Kieran Kirkendall. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. So you have a background in functional medicine, functional neurology, applied kinesiology, and you've helped over 40,000 patients. What do you think is the most common cause of anxiety among the patients that you've worked with? Absolutely. Well, I mean, what's amazing is a Harvard Journal of Medicine actually says that the number one cause of uh, disease in our United States is actually anxiety and all of the stress, right? Wow. And so anxiety is one of the hugest things that I see with people coming in. And the biggest things are, are very, very simple, oxygen and glucose, because you only have two fuels that run your brain. The oxygen pathway is extremely missed. So when you go into your medical or alternative physician or practitioner, they're going to look at your blood chemistry or they may give you some symptom, you know, symptom questions. Mm -hmm. And what they typically will miss is the amount of oxygen that is showing up in the, in the blood. A lot of times, you know, people are anemic and you mm -hmm. can have anemia through B vitamins or you can have anemia through not enough oxygen through iron deficiency. And women get this more commonly because you menstruate every single month, which is essentially hemorrhaging liquid oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you hemorrhage that oxygen, oxygen goes down. Mm -hmm. So if your oxygen is low, it's like me sitting there choking you. What are you going to do if I come over and start choking you? You're going to get anxious. You're going to be very anxious. Yeah. And so then you have glucose, right? And glucose, as we know today, if you look at any of the major, you know, coffee dispensaries across America, I'm not going to name the primary ones, but you can tell that they're always there. The people are going to be in the parking lot at 10, 2, and 4 o'clock. The reason is because they eat at 8 o'clock before work, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they eat at 12 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, the blood sugar tanks, right? Mm -hmm. And 4 o'clock. So what's happening is when you eat, most people are eating carbohydrate-rich foods, and then their sugar drops. Mm -hmm. And every time the sugar drops, it causes this craving, right? So when oxygen is low and your blood sugar is doing this up and down all the time, you're on a roller coaster. Right. And it cuts that oxygen to the brain, and then you start to feel really stressed. Well, and I think that, you know, it, that's so interesting that you had mentioned those two things because you know, when we're thinking about health, when we think about nutrition, perhaps the most overlooked things are oxygen, glucose, um, but these are life and death situations where, as you pointed out, you know, if your body is short on oxygen, you're going to be very anxious when your body starts running out of sugar or it can't, you know, regulate the blood sugar levels. I mean, this is a, a potential you know, survival being threatened. Um, so what are the solutions that you recommend? How can people, you know, start right now to, uh, to give themselves more of those two components? Absolutely. Well, one is working with a practitioner and not just any practitioner because most are going to look at anemias through all of what's called your, you know, CBCs. They're going to look through basically the different indicators that are in the blood. We're going to keep it really simple here for the mm -hmm. reviewing audience. But what happens is, um, a functional medicine practitioner is going to look at more uh, sensitive tests because just because you're on the verge of just above normal in the medical realm doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in the low oxygen realm. Mm -hmm. Most people are running from their daily life, <laughs> running from the tiger, literally, mm -hmm. and so they're not breathing from the diaphragm. They're the neck breathers. So a lot of people say, yeah, my mother, she used to back <laughs> breathe through her neck and stuff. And so you see people... <laughs> Right. And so one is oxygen and slowing your breath, just learning to <laughs> breathe more deep, more slow, and right. look at really your lifestyle management is huge. But again, oxygen, looking at it in the blood chemistry, very, very important. That's one. And so that would look like taking a little bit of B vitamins, you know, that's never a scary or dangerous thing because B vitamins are a water-based um, they're not fat soluble, right? So they break down in any excess you urinate outside of the body. And usually that'll look like, you know, really yellow urine. If, you know, if you get too much, if you overload, so you don't need to take so much.
But upping your B vitamins will help you, one, with stress, but also with all of the anemia aspects that come from B vitamins. But two, um, if you're not really sure if you're on that iron side of anemia, and mostly it's going to be more females than men because you're menstruating, Mm -hmm. you could eat things like blackstrap molasses or licorice, you know, that's really big in Scandinavian countries, not really my thing. <laughs> the licorice tastes crazy. But basically, um, you can do those types of things, green leafy vegetables, you know, red meats, those types mm-hmm. of things. And just Google, hey, what's really rich sources of iron in my diet? Right. Very simple concepts. Well, and I think, you know, you also mentioned breathing. It's one of those things that I think, you know, we hear that a lot now in, in the realm of natural health. And a lot of times, you know, when I mention it with my health coaching clients, I kind of get the feeling they're kind of rolling their eyes at me. And I think it's just one of those things that you can't, um, you can't say enough what a simple solution that is. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, notice when you're breathing really shallow. And of course, we all can, uh, you know, know that feeling when you're anxious and it's... <sighs> Well, slow your breathing down, Mm -hmm. take a deeper breath. You know, it feels really simple. It feels like you just want to roll your eyes at it. But what you're saying is that actually that lack of oxygen you're getting could be, you know, one of the biggest components, um, but it's also maybe one of the easiest things to resolve just by slowing down, getting in the habit of taking deeper, slower breaths. Exactly. I mean, actually, if you go to Hawaii, the Hawaiians and the Kauaians on the smaller island will tell, will call us. The howies, which are basically means the ones without breath. Wow. You know, a lot of the indigenous will actually refer to us that way, d- different jungles in the world. So they know <laughs> everybody's stressed out in the Western world. So it's mm. a very simple thing. You know, you've got teachers and bumper stickers saying it, but only you control whether you're going to slow your breath and breathe more calmly. And that will allow you to start to actually feel better. It's silly, but it's everything. Breath. Right. Number two would be glucose, right? And so what can you do to stabilize the glucose is not doing this roller coaster of sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's going up and down all day. What we need to do is more lower carbohydrate based, right? More good protein and fat, whether animal or otherwise. I'll let everybody out there on YouTube land fight it out. But I mean, really just, you know, listen to your body, but it's the sugar, that if, if your blood sugar, you know, you drink a soda and you get really tired or you get a headache after that, it's like your body saying, I have to put this guy to sleep right now. I have to give this guy a headache so he will actually listen to me that mm. my body is not having this uh, thing that I'm bringing in. You know, it's the body saying, hey, man, have you ever even listened to what I want to do? Yeah. Your ego, your mind is thinking, oh, these things, I don't want to feel pain and emotion in my life, so I'll drink or eat these foods. But check in with what, what does your body actually really want if you listen? Does my body really want the soda? So when you stop this roller coaster, Mm -hmm. that oxygen and glucose floods to your brain and you will generally just, this is is just pure science. It just naturally starts to flow better. Mm -hmm. It's a number one cause, oxygen and glucose imbalance of all the patient stuff that comes in. And from a functional neurology standpoint, it's the first thing doctors are taught to treat. Wow. Yeah. Well, and I think that you touched on something really key there, which is that a headache is not just this pesky thing that occurs for no reason and like, oh, why is my body messing with me? Mm -hmm. But it's your body trying to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, just to that simple cue of, you know, paying attention to how you're feeling throughout the day or when you're getting headaches and stuff like that and knowing that that's your body's way of trying to kind of grab you by the shoulders and say... Hey, slow down, Mm -hmm. you know, because when you do have a splitting headache, you lay down, you go to sleep. Like for me, I put something over my eyes Mm -hmm. because I get light sensitive and it forces you to breathe more slowly and breathe Mm -hmm. more deeply. It forces you to, you know, either lay down or at least slow down in your day. Um, And so it's a great example of listening to your body and using its its messages as a cue for for you to take a certain action and not feeling like you're in a war against your body why do i have this headache why do i have this anxiety why do i have x y or z mm-hmm. but maybe listening to that as a cue of your body trying to tell you what it needs your yeah. body trying to guide you to the path mm-hmm. that's going to you know replenish its resources rather mm-hmm. than continuing to zap its resources 
So we are at a time right now where we really need to start listening to our bodies because our bodies have been speaking to us for all these many, many, many thousands of years we've been on the planet. But mm. as our intelligence increases, so does our awareness. And our awareness is like, wow, this is actually telling me when I eat these potato chips. I had a friend that told me the other day he ate potato chips and he puked. He vomited afterwards. I had another friend who was like, oh, I've got the worst migraine after I drink the soda. And it's like, well, I want you to thank your body for telling you, hey, silly, you need to not eat these things anymore. Mm. It's very simple. So just start to listen. Do I feel better or do I feel worse after this? And we could get into very specifics around, you know, is it a Mediterranean type diet or a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting or paleo? Or I would honestly say, keep it really simple, stupid. You know, if you like those individual types of diets, I think that's fantastic. Do your research on it. Mm -hmm. But what I would suggest is just vegetables as your primary intake, right? Uh, fruits and nuts and seeds as you as you feel that your body does with them right mm -hmm. this is very very general we're going right now right. and then good fats and good proteins every meal if you start cutting out the processed stuff with all of the sugar I mean an average soda has anywhere from 40 to 60 grams that's a that's a ziploc you know like a like a mm -hmm. snack bag ziploc this tall and this wide full of sugar I used to put this on sugar uh, on a patient's chest or a pint of ice cream is 60 grams, 65, sometimes more grams of sugar. Yeah. I put it on a kid's chest in the office and I say, eat that. And they're like, no way. And it's like, you eat that every time you drink a soda or drink an ice cream. Yeah. So if we listen, hey, this is kind of ridiculous. Do we realize that all of that sugar in the United States is now being genetically modified? It's mm. either cane sugar or coming from beet, right? And those are 90% or greater GMO uh, crops. Mm. This is a significant thing. One teaspoon of that sugar will lower your immune system for 24 to 48 hours. This is a serious deal. Right. So the body's ingesting things, which is sugar, where the glycemic index goes like this. And insulin's like, man, we got to handle this. So the pancreas starts producing all this, and it drops really, really fast. Right. And then your sugar's doing this. Over time, the insulin produced by the pancreas is like, man, I'm not doing this anymore. Every time I do this, it keeps calling me back to send more insulin. I'm done. Click, and that's what diabetes is. is the pancreas is like, I'm done. We're yeah. no longer producing anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so keeping it really simple, good fats, good proteins, good healthy vegetables, fruits and nuts. Now, some people have really, really bad infection. And some people have really, really issues with SIBO and fungal issues and viral and all this. And then you need to get into more specifics. But for a general audience... Right. Let's just think with our heads, you know? Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's it's almost a shame that there's um, there's a lot of really wonderful diets out there, mm -hmm. ways of eating. Um, but sometimes, you know, we get, we get so, uh, so stressed out in trying to eat a certain way or does this fit my diet or does this fit my macros? I mean, there's so many things that I end up telling people, you know, if you just think about reducing the processed foods, mm -hmm. reducing the sugar. You don't have to have all of these different restrictions on yourself. Totally. You know, at the end of the day, your body isn't going, man, I wish you'd eat a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish you'd eat a Mediterranean diet. <laughs> it just needs the things yeah. it needs. So if you can just put your focus simply on eating healthy foods, staying away from all, you know, especially the, the processed sugars and things like that, which are just so pervasive. Mm -hmm. You know, the hard part is that, you know, there's billions of dollars in this sugar industry that are spent to make us want these foods, to convince us that it's okay to eat these foods. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a difficult thing to resist the sodas and the candy bars yes. because they're so pervasive. But if you can just do that simple thing of trying to eat natural foods and not stress yourself out about it too much, you know, you're going to be in such a better place than, you know, creating a, a stressful intention of doing some really specific diet uh, that in my opinion, you know, oftentimes if you're taking complete food groups out of your diet, if you're putting so many restrictions on yourself that you are more stressed out about eating mm -hmm. than you've ever been before, then it's, you know, kind of counterintuitive to the overall goal, which totally. is just give your body what it needs. Totally. And, you know, most people are just trying to biohack their way to health. And I always tell patients, health is nonlinear. It's like you and I are going to put on a backpack and we're going to start to go on a journey. And sometimes you're going to be like, Woo! 
this is great, this is easy. And then there's a scaling of a mountain, right? You're like, mm -hmm. oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to climb this mountain right now. And so you got to realize that if you're not trying to biohack your way to lose a hundred pounds, the reason people are so obsessed most of the time with these extreme diets and the snooky cookie diet and all these ridiculous types of concepts, right? Mm -hmm. Cause everybody's trying to make a buck off of you is if we keep it really simple and we realize this is going to take time. It took time to put 100 pounds on your body. It's going to take time to take 100 pounds off. And mm -hmm. so it really, all of this, so we've got oxygen, we've got glucose, and one of the other big ones is activation, and that's movement. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about movement, I want to talk about movement not from, you know, what is the newest, hottest way to work out, but I actually want to talk about it from an activation part of the brain. Because if you don't... Doctors know, surgeons know, if you have a broken bone and they actually put a cast on your arm, if you don't actually, if they, they don't cast the joints, right? Because if they do very quickly, that arm is going to, within actually 48 uh, hours or so, start laying down sclerosis, which is bone deposits, right? Mm -hmm. And very quickly, within a week or less, you won't be able to move this arm, right? So if you don't move it, you lose it. You've heard that. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the eyes or the ears. If you actually block the ability to send what's called affrontation, information into the brain, that brain's information ability to receive goes, it plummets, right? Mm -hmm. So oxygen, glucose, activation, and the activation actually movement blocks pain. So they say nociception is blocked by proprioception. So if you bang your finger, you, ooh, ow, I bang my finger, and you know, you do that, your brain naturally knows to send a lot of sensory input, and that's why you hit your knee, oh, I hit my knee, ow, and yeah, you rub it, yeah. you rub it. It's a natural thing. It's like a primitive reflex that you have back from when we were little monkeys, you know? Like, you know, when you, the monkey falls and it grasps, it's called grasping reflex. It's a primitive-based reflex. And so the less you move and you're like, oh, well, I'm really depressed and so I don't want to get out there. Well, you're in this cycle and you're basically, you got low oxygen, you got low, low glucose, and like most people in the Western states and the world, they're not moving. So it's like mm. a snowball rolling down the mountain. They've started to get fat. They've started to get low oxygen and low glucose. But if you can just start to move, start to move your body, that movement sends sensory input, mm -hmm. which actually brings up your frontal cortex where you start to feel, man, I feel a little happier. Yeah. So even just taking a walk, mm -hmm. walking outside, doing, a walk. I mean, can it be as simple as like you stand up at your desk and just, you know, move your arms around, march even in place? Even that's as I silly mean, as that is, it is, you know, like a walking desk, you know, I've realized in the modern world, you know, go out and take your dog for a stroll, but yeah. specifically cross crawl pattern is the best. So that's where, like on the Beatles cover of the album, where you see them walking across the street in the old image, you know, uh -huh. the, the little cross rock. Well, actually having them go out and, you know, do this type of pattern, so that's swimming, you know, that's exercise bike. So if you have an option to go and do the thing where you're like doing your legs, but you're not doing your arms, do the legs and the arms in the gym, right? Anything you can get that full movement, because we're sending all this information across your corpus callosum, we're activating the brain, and it brings a lot 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 faster uh, powerful stuff this is how i used to work with autistic kids and brain injury uh, people we have to get that crosstalk of the body wow mm -hmm. so i mean that's a really really important thing oxygen glucose activation and simply beginning to listen to your body what does my body really want right mm -hmm. now it's talking to me this is huge well, this is just fascinating, Dr. K. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I think that we can probably wrap up this particular video, mm -hmm. but I am really excited to sit down with you again and visit some of the other components of anxiety. We talked about emotional components, neurological components. So I'm really looking forward to uh, those future videos with you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the rest of the videos in this course. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon.